Reuters is reporting that an Oakland company working with scientists from the University of California is seeking to break through in the race to develop a marijuana breathalyzer. So Hound Labs Inc. created a device that's also designed to double up as an alcohol breathalyzer. So it's two in one. Quote, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said earlier this year that while cannabis impairs psychomotor skills and cognitive function, not enough is known about how much is needed to affect driving performance. So they need to do some research on that front still, too, where you figure out exactly what the limit and what the level should be. And actually, I mean, I think the, the level for alcohol... Like, there's, there's a, a spectrum and a realm of debate there. I think we'd all admit that. And it probably is different for different people. Not that you can somehow structure that in the law because everybody's tolerance is different. Um, but they need to figure out what exactly would constitute too much when it comes to marijuana and driving. Uh, and then they can employ using this new thing that they just developed. Uh, they don't really explain very clearly how it works. I do know, though, that it goes based off THC, which would make sense because THC is like the active ingredient that actually makes you feel high. Uh, so overall, I think this is a great thing. Like, I know some people might hear this, but boo, boo, ruining my fun, boo. No, no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with it. Like for drunk driving laws, for example, I do think that there's a realm uh, or there's a level where, you know, it's debatable. So some people, two beers, they're totally fine. And they might be technically over the limit, but fuck off, they're fine. So, like, there's a realm that's debatable, but I think most people can agree that once you hit a certain level, yeah, you shouldn't fucking be on the road. Maybe that level's higher than what it is right now, but you are really putting everybody else in danger when you do that. So that same logic applied to marijuana makes sense to me, but there's a more important point, which is that this is proving the mainstreamification of weed, which is something we should all get behind. I've stated before on the show, like, we bemoan corporatization on all the time in a variety of different places and on a variety of different issues. But when it comes to marijuana, no, I can't wait for that to become corporatized. I can't fucking wait because that would prove that it's made it. It's in the mainstream of society. Everybody understands that this thing ain't going nowhere. It is what it is. You better get fucking used to it. And bottom line, would you rather have the corporations involved? Would you rather go buy some weed at CVS or buy it from Bud Light or whatever company? As opposed to getting it through a chain of people that goes back to a drug cartel in Mexico that literally beheads people and terrorizes their local towns. Come on, we all know the answer to that. No matter how anti-corporation you are, you would rather have this out in the open, legalized, taxed, and regulated. I get it. We'd prefer small businesses. Spread the wealth, don't concentrate it, yada yada. But would you rather have corporations or drug cartels? Come on, who are you kidding? So, that would be a sign of the mainstreamification of it. This is a sign of exactly that. And that's why, you know, even if in principle you're against it, at least it's something that is a, a positive sign which shows that if you're in favor of legalization, there's a lot more good stuff to come.